Hey guys, now I know we've already looked at some pretty small PCs recently, but this here is even tinier. This 8 liter case has an Intel i9, but still supports a full length GPU as well. This is the Intel NUC 11 Extreme. It's a little bit different to a regular system. So this is actually a bare bones kit, which means it comes with a CPU, board and power supply already installed, which makes life a lot easier. Of course, we still get that customization where we get to pick the rest of the parts. So what are we doing today? We're gonna to build this and I'm gonna show you just how easy it is. Let's go. So all we need to build this bare bones kit right here is a screwdriver and pliers are optional if your hands aren't quite as small as mine. So we've got a four screws here on the back and they actually hold all three panels in place. It's actually just a really simple design and it's, it's nice and easy. With the four screws just loosened there, they do hold in place little thumb screws, really nice. Pop this one off and then both the front and back panel just simply pop off, just like that. So the front panel is actually what holds the top latch in and just these little arrows is just a nice piece of mind. It just shows you the steps along the way. So with it open, we can see exactly what's included with the bare bones kit. So we've got our power supply, which is pre-installed, 650 watt, 80 plus gold, which is enough for a lot of GPUs which are currently available on the market. And I think it's just really nice that they've still managed to fit three fans for exhaust to the top here. Again, it's just such a small case, I mean, eight liters, it's nice. This right here is our computing element, which we do have to take out if we want to install our memory and storage. So we'll do that first. So this little plastic shroud here, it acts as a bit of a ventilation system for our CPU fan. So it just works by grabbing in fresh air, which will be from the back of the case. So when we're dealing with such a compact little system, it's actually a really nice design there. So before we remove the computing element, do make sure that everything is unplugged. There is two little antennas here, and they're actually how we get the Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth. Make sure they're unplugged. And since we're working in such a small area, that's where those optional pliers can come in handy. So at the back of the case, there is a little tiny cutout which lets us access the latch to release the computing element from the PCI Express slot. So if you're having a little bit of trouble taking it out, just make sure that one's released. So this is it, a little computing element where all the magic happens, CPU, storage, memory, all lives inside here. So let's get inside as well. So again, super easy, two screws. So underneath this plate right here is where our 11900KV lives. We've also got three NVMe M.2 slots and two sodium memory slots as well. So here we are, all installed, ready to go. So this board here runs off a WM590 chipset, which is of course compatible with our i9-11900KB. We've got our 32 gigabytes of DDR4 sodium memory, one terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD, with two free slots here for further expansion later on. Now, let's get it back in our system. So we do need to re-plug everything and some of the cables are a bit easier to do before we actually slot it in, so do what works best for you. So every gaming PC of course needs one of these. So what we have is a GeForce RTX 3060 graphics card. Do keep in mind that your graphics card does need to be two slots or less in thickness, otherwise it won't fit inside the case. So make sure it works, of course. So before we close the case, I'll just let you guys have a quick look inside with everything installed. If we do have a graphics card that utilizes all the space available, you can just tell how well it's designed so this tiny eight liter case can still have full size components. I think it's worked out really nicely.
And that's it guys, they're really that easy to assemble yourself. However, if you do want to leave the whole build process up to our team of experts here at M-Wave, you can do that and get them to fully pre-build it for you. Now, it is a gaming PC, I'm sure you want to see how she plays, so let's jump into some games and test it out. Now, I want to show you guys a range of different games, so we can see how she handles different levels of system requirements. So we'll have a couple of less demanding games, a mid-range game, and a more demanding AAA title, of course. I'll test out all the games on 1080p, and we'll see how she runs on max settings. We'll be starting with the more popular casual games. So we'll be playing some League of Legends, Valorant, and Apex Legends. I am expecting some pretty high numbers on League and Valorant. However, with Apex needing to render a pretty large map, I do expect the numbers to be a little bit lower. And that's exactly what we saw. With League of Legends and Valorant getting around 220 plus frames mid-fight, jumping up to a much larger number on those easier scenes. Apex Legends still got 130 to 150 FPS, depending on the environment at hand. For our mid-range game, I'm gonna try out GTA 5. It's still a very popular game, and although it's not super demanding, it still looks really nice and smooth on max settings. As it's not a first-person shooter, we definitely don't need 200 plus frames, but I'd still like to hit at least 140 full frames to match a lot of gaming monitor caps. And that's pretty much exactly what we got. Got 188 frames on average throughout the benchmarking test and during some of the gameplay as well. Finally, let's see how she handles one of the newer AAA titles. I'm gonna be playing Elden Rings. Being a newer game, I was super happy to see that we were able to hit that 60 FPS cap which this game has implemented and that's also that golden number when it comes to action role playing games and story games alike. And that's it for today guys. I think this is a great little system for anyone who might want to build at home but just doesn't have the experience or doesn't feel confident. As you saw, it was pretty easy to assemble. If you'd like to find out more about the Intel NAC 11 Extreme Kits or any of the pre-builds available like the M-Wave Beast Canyon i9 gaming PC, I'll drop a few links down below. As always, I will see you next time.